Hello, how's it going? Oh no, I've got, I feel a bit dirty saying Telephone Tuesdays and I'm not Mitch. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a Telephone Tuesdays. I know I'm not Mitch, but that's because I'm introducing this GEC Packs, which I picked up about six months ago or so. I did a video on the Look Mum No Computer channel about this. It's a Packs, which is private automatic exchange. Unlike the exchanges over there, this was made for talking within an office. So a phone to phone inside of an office. I'm not sure whether this specific one as an external line that meaning you can call externally if you dial an extra number or something but we'll talk about the functions really quickly but if you want to have a look closer about how this actually works and uh, what all of the things do then check over on the video that I've already done about it and uh, what are the modifications I've done to it we'll talk quickly about the modifications anyway because we're here we may as well so this is a, a GEC PAX 25 line. That means it's got 25 lines. Technically, this isn't actually a fully kitted out 25 line because it's only got, quick maths, 16 lines. Uh, the full one would have, so these up here are line relays. They're really interesting because they're actually multi-action. Multi if you look really closely, they've got two different sets of contacts. You send more current through it, then both go down. If you only send a little bit, only one of the line relay sides goes down. It's really interesting. I hadn't seen any before until I saw these. Also, the final selectors, the Z relays, have that set up as well. And the X relays. Oh, I forgot about that. Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. So right now, this hasn't got everything. It's got uh, space to get another set of eight lines, which technically, if you do quick maths, I can't do it. Eight times three is 24. That's 24 lines. 24. 25 line. Are they trying to cheat us out of something? Please comment below why it's only 24. Is eight, eight times three, eight, eight times three? What it has is two line finders down here. Instead of the line finders in the UAX13 exchange, which is actually a two motion line finder, so it goes up and finds it, which means it can select between any Thing between zero and a hundred phones so you can plug a hundred phones into it and you can find those technically it's not actually a hundred phones I think it's got how many levels 50 subscribers for of like house people and 10 um, 10 kind of coin fee ones you know phone boxes so but you could in theory plug a hundred phones into a the line finder on the UAX 13 this one it's a, a single motion which means instead of it going up and choosing coordinates like in battleships like four five it's a single motion one so it actually uses a uni selector and it's able to select between 25 different contacts which means it's a 25 line this can select between 25 different phones it's not plugged in right now but in the video you can see that's overlaid it will you pick up the phone the uni selectors like oh there's a phone being called let's find out which phone that is it will spin around trying to find that phone it's like boom i've got it and then it will put it through to the dial tone which is down here there's a little bit of it vibrating. This is an electro vibration, uh, vibrating, electro vibrator ringtone thingamagoop. So it's a little bit different to a ringing machine that's in there. The tones are actually made from vibrating electromechanical items in here. It's amazing. Uh, so you hear that and then it jumps over to here. The final selector actually acts as, well, it's not just the final selector. It's sort of like the first selector and the final selector all wired into a single line. Uh, it's amazing because the way it's wired up, uh, you dial a two and then you dial a zero. It stays on the same thing. So it goes one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. The numbers are arranged. The two notion numbers are arranged that it will, no matter what you call, like you could dial a nine and a four, even though that technically doesn't tell you what to call it in, it will call any of the 25 phones that are on it. So it's able to get a con to, co to connect to any of the 25 phones with uni selectors. I know that was a lot of spiel, but for some people that might be interesting. Um, there is uh, one, two line finders, one, two, three uni selectors here. It's been a while and I'm trying to remember what it does. I'm telling a lie, this middle one is called an allotter. What this one does is it chooses which of the line finders to go to. If there was one, two, three line finders, so for instance, uh, you can upgrade this, and this is a, a very low budget one with um, minimal accessories. Um, it can have up to three line finders. That means three phones can be picked up and phoning at the same time. This one's only got two, so that means you can only have two phones calling at the same time. What this middle one does is it allots between these two. So if, every time you pick up a phone, it'll flick, 
and that will say, let's go over to this line finder. So the next phone that gets picked up goes to that line finder. A lot of talk, not for everybody, but it might be for some people. But then it goes over to these two final selectors and the relay boxes go up here, but that's, well, it's not there. Uh, and this also has space for something down here called the executive line, which means that if the big person, big person picks up the phone and goes, oh no, it's engaged, they could push a button, which automatically hangs somebody else up from their not as important conversation. Uh, which means that they could get, you know, priority to talking over the phone. So the executive line, I think that would have been a relay set of the relays sitting back here. But anyway, and then we look on the inside. What I did in that video was I, oh my goody aunts. Oh, it's bolted in. One set, I'm just going to unbolt these. Mitch, you're behind me. Mitch is going to be modifying this in a second. Well, he's going to be making it uh, friendly for uh, people to use because right now it's not plugged in. It was uh, elsewhere in the museum when it was uh, wired in and then it got moved and it didn't get wired back in. But we open it up. Um, I've added two um, uh, wire, uh, plugs for phones to be plugged into. This is number 35, so you dial 35. This one, this phone that's plugged into Wear All Ring, you dial 20. This phone is plugged into there. But not only that, um, what am I talking about? Up here, I've actually wired all of the 25 phone lines, um, well, 16 phone lines into these lights. So the idea is, it's, you know, that you don't need 25 phones to show what it does. So what you do is you dial it up and you dial any of the numbers from uh, 2, 1 up to uh, 35 and 36. Uh, you can dial and turn on a number, uh, turn on a light. It's not the most interesting thing in the world, but it's for people just to, just to show it, people get, they get a concept of how it works. There's also a couple of other lights like F, S, A, L, F, B and C. These lights are for different relays just to flash on and off when you pick it up to show it does something. Um, if this is a different, runs on a different voltage to the UAX13, UAX13 is 48, minus 48 volts, 50 volts around. This one runs on 25 volts. So I haven't wired, we haven't made a conversion box to, for this to call the UAX13 or the UAX13 to call this. Might happen in the future, but it's just figuring out how to get a 25, a 24 volt uh, uh, telephone exchange to talk to the 50 volt. Maybe it's simpler than what I'm thinking. I don't know yet. Uh, it's the same voltage as the one over here, the German one, which we haven't wired in yet. We'll be wiring that one in. This is a 24 volt one. They're both based on the same standards, which is from the Ericsson thing. I might have pulled that out of my bum, I'm not sure. But the plan is, Mitch, pop over here, what's your plan? So we're gonna be adding a, um, instead of having a phone here, because it's quite a tight, narrow bit of the museum, um, there's a, usually a plastic cover on here, gonna be putting um, a dial and a button for people to dial the numbers and make it light up, right? That's it, yeah, because you don't actually need a, you know, an audio headset if you're dialing lights, do you? No. No, so. but actually, well, if we end up wiring this into the exchange, then maybe we'll have to, but we won't worry about that for now. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got this, oh, oh no. Pop over here, I've got a new old stock. Actually, here's one. We've got new old stock in the, bar, in the boxes. Shall we grab one of these? Actually, no, we won't grab one of them. We've got new old stock uh, dials over there. What's, What's the nicest looking one we got? Just see if that one rings. Oh, oh, is this one all right? What do you reckon? Seems to work. Oh, it seems to do well enough. Well, yeah, maybe that one. And I then what shall we one. use for a switch? That's it, because we need to, this is simulating the cradle switch, isn't it? When you pick up the phone, <clears throat> yeah, normally. You pick up the phone that, that makes a connection. Uh, we need to find a switch that will make a connection. There's a bunch of switches, I think, sitting around here. Uh, have a look in that drawer there, see if there's any switches and I'll look over here. Oh my giddy aunt. Loads of stuff. I think, oh, 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 here we go. I'm just gonna, so we're gonna find one, of, have you found one? No. Uh, we're gonna find a switch that'll do the job. Is it gonna be a permanently on switch or a momentary switch? It's gonna have to be a momentary, I reckon. Uh, momentary uh, is gonna be a little bit tough. They all seem to be. Uh, oh. Um, be nice to use one of these key switches, wouldn't it? Uh, it's not momentary. Uh, uh, maybe there, maybe there's an adjustment. I can't remember how the actual momentary mechanism looks, because there might just be a slight. Mm. I don't know where. Is there moment? Is there even? They do make them. Pretty or we could just use a simple toggle, momentary smaller toggle switch. Mm. Then it's easier Push to drill button. a hole because you'll have to cut a square hole for that. Yeah. 
Oh, or we could 3D print a socket, but mm. maybe it's just easier using a small uh, motor push button one. Oh, push button, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, there's no push buttons. We've got similar ones on diff different displays around. What about the arcade? Yeah, the arcade yeah. push buttons. You want to use an arcade buttons. push button? We can do that. It's just whether people are <laughs> going to really start abusing it, going da 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 da, and wearing out the unicyclers, but I think we don't have to worry too much about that. Oh, so, yeah. Or at least we'll keep an eye on it, and if uh, we'll come up with a solution, if that's a problem. Yeah, it'll be fine. The worst thing for us to do is put a, put a note saying, don't push too quickly, yeah. blah, 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 and then there's going to be a kick going. It's part of the reason why these have uniselectors, isn't it? Because they're a bit more resilient than the two motion ones. Yeah, and even so, though, however you say that, that yeah. one, yeah. I've got a sneaky suspicion it's got a really annoying problem with one of the uniselectors, uh, okay. and it's just doesn't ever want to work right, but I'm leaving that with you. Now. Okay. I've, 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 <laughs> That's I've done my, my thing time on about. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so let's go and find a push button and then you can get on with it. You can get, get, get building. All right, let's go. Let's do this. We've got the sharpest tool in the shed. Not me, this hole cutter here. We're making a hole for our dial. And if you're getting the urge to say, don't do it like that, do it like this. Well, then you can just leave that in the comments for me. <laughs> <laughs> what a plum. So these telephone dials are not really designed to be panel mounted like this. So we've had to do a bit of MacGyver in and bent over these little tabs, if you can see those. And Ben had a clever idea. We could just use a nut and a bowl and we can clamp it to the back side of the panel. Do you know what? It actually works pretty well. We don't move around at all. And here I'm making the point that you can get any job done with a number two screwdriver and a pair of 81s. There we go. That's on there. Let's see if it's working all right. Pretty good, beautiful. Now I've got to figure out where this little switchy switch is going to go. I reckon about them. We're using a spade bit here to cut the next hole. And the trick with cutting acrylic is go really fast, but you need to press very lightly. And I don't really want to talk about it. We had a bit of an accident. It was totally my fault when I took the panel off. I, was, I, I cracked it by accident. I do want to talk about it. Don't worry, it didn't make much mess inside the cabinet. Now I'm wiring in the pseudo phone line into the exchange tag board at the back here to connect it all together and I'm soldering it on nicely. And so the line comes out and goes into one side of the push switch and then comes out of the other side, the long low wee wire into the dial and then back into the exchange. So it's forming a loop and it's getting interrupted by these two switches in series. Holding the push switch connects the circuit which triggers all the line finder mechanism and then the dial interrupts that circuit which does all the stepping and switches you through the exchange to the phone that you want to call. Or in this case, to light up a lamp. Can you see that little vibrator in there that does the ringtone? Put a little label on there so people know what to do. Here's Benny Boy calling up one of those lamps. Well, it's working, and I think, uh, as with most of these things, it's always harder than you think it's going to be. I thought it was going to be a two-minute job, and, uh, yeah, never as easy as you think. Managed to crack the Perspex. Oh my goodness. I actually got so annoyed with myself, I had to sit down and take a break. Ah, uh, but it's done, it's working. Let me press the button. There you go. And we do the dial in, and you can see it switching, and then the lights light up, and it's down there, and then it's doing all the ringing machine thing, doing the vibrate vibrator down there, doing all the good stuff. So you can come here and play with this and uh, see how it's all working. I will see you in another Telephone Tuesday. This is Telephone Tuesday. Is a, what's the bloody the catchphrase? Just... I can't remember what it is. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>